The Mercedes CLE is merging C-Class and E-Class and it's available as Coupe and also as the convertible, the CLE Cabriolet. Let's take it out. And also, since this is a segment I'm personally interested in buying, actually, would I buy this vehicle here for myself? I'll find out. Here is Thomas Nautilfühl in 4K, full screen, full length. As the teaser says, soon available. <laughs> Let's go here with the front. This is the AMG line in spectral blue. Typical a Thomas blue color here in Autogefühl. And the AMG line has the MicroStar pattern here in this front grille. But in this case, even the base avant-garde line would have the MicroStar pattern here in the CLE. The AMG line is differentiating here in the lower part is in the sport here graphic. Headlamps, optional digital light for more high beam performance. And the length here, both coupe and convertible, 4 meters 85 or 191 inches. Longer wheelbase than the C class coupe or convertible head, and more in a size comparable to E class coupe and convertible, but still the platform is C class. Here at the moment, roof open, obviously. Wheels from 18 to 20 inch. These here are the 20 inch wheels, the biggest ones that are available, AMG styling. Yeah, pretty cool, but of course they can also reduce the comfort if they go too big, actually. And talking about comfort, as for the suspension, you get a base suspension. Oh, the Leah should not fall off this cliff, you know. <laughs> it's a beautiful Tenerife location here today. Fixed sport suspension or a fixed comfort suspension, or this one here equipped today, the adaptive suspension, and then it rules depending on the driving mode so you select and we will test that one for you here today. In the rear, it looks a little bit like a luxury yacht, a boat or something. Here, the light signature, I think it's quite cool. But then again, this middle black part, they've shown it with you know, a couple of models now, also with a GLC coupe or something. And I don't really get it. I would then maybe just go through with a light strip or what's your take on that? CLE 450 is, of course, the best engine for this vehicle, the 3 day six cylinder. Soon more about the engines, but here, the Autogefühl fake exhaust police is here for you and it will also receive a t-shirt on Autogefühl very soon. I'm going to show that to you. <laughs> here, fake exhaust, not really needed, I think, especially when you go for a six-cylinder, right? Rear axle steering, by the way, is not available for the convertible on the CLE Coupe. It is available, but not also on the North American market. Um, yeah, interesting product strategy there. Here in the convertible, say they didn't have any room for that, actually. But with the convertible, it's even more important, of course, to open and close the roof. And this always looks very spectacular. And the cool thing is now, usually the threshold was like 50 kilometers an hour. Now, 60 kilometers an hour is the threshold where you can open the roof and it takes about 20 seconds. At least that's the official figure. Close the roof then here now. Let's see how it goes. It's always interesting to watch that mechanism, right? There we go. I'm not exactly sure if I would really do it at 60 kilometers an hour because that's still kind of fast and also takes stress like on the all the parts and so on. There we go. So, yeah. And we can also open it again. You can see it one more time. Yeah, this is very good camera work from Lia. Thank you so much to take the different perspectives to make it more interesting for you. There we go. You can get the convertible roof, by the way, color in black, red, or in gray so you can also play around with these colors and as for the side windows here um, you can press a button that you can here lower all windows at the very same time that's also a handy thing to good to have and here look at that this is the belt reacher so you open the door take a seat close the door and then this belt reacher here is giving you the seat belt so they don't have to like go around there well when you have broken ribs then it's especially helpful yeah, telling you from experience, motocross, mountain biking and stuff, yeah, then you maybe know why. <laughs> here, seating position here, you have a sporty feeding, definitely, and the front cockpit is, of course, coupe and convertible, kind of like digital instruments. Then you have here the vertical screen, which is what's very interesting here from the SL, maybe you know the feature of tilting the screen like this. This is against glare. So this would be the anti-glare function uh, that you can still see it when it's very sunny, you drive with the open top. So I think an interesting feature and indeed it makes sense that works. So sometimes when you cannot see it when the screen is like this, you can better see it when it's like this. Temperature unit is always in the lower left part. Steering wheel, this is the AMG line. So the normal base steering wheel would be like two elements here that go together and, and this is separated here in the AMG line 
everything hashtag capacitive BS, so you have to slide and stuff. So you get used to it, but it's not ideal while driving, let's take it that way. The biggest problem are at the moment here the animal skin seat surfaces, actually, because I can show that to you. They are just so stiff. It, it, when you sit on it, it feels like you're sitting on a wooden bench. And this is a new vehicle. It already has wrinkles in it and looks like Granny's old sofa at the same time. I don't get it. However, two possibilities. This here, almost the same structure and same colors like beige, brown and black. You can get also in the Artico High Grade Leather Red. That would be already a better choice. And you can also get in the Angelion the microfiber seats, the Dynamica microfiber. This would be the most comfortable choice. As it is right here now, I cannot recommend it at all indeed. Not from the ethical standpoint, but especially also not from the comfort standpoint. That's very interesting. You can see there are additional seats here back there. And the thing is that you can go for a classic wind deflector. I can show that to you very soon. Or for the air cap system. And so even if it's not standard, here you have these mounts for the classic wind deflector. I'm soon going to reveal that to you. Um, but that's built just in every vehicle. It doesn't come standard. What comes standard is indeed this air cap system. And I mean, it's good that they make more stuff standard. We also have air scarf here. This is the neck heating. There we go. There's some warm air out of there. But here the air cap system is very interesting. Have this button here in the middle console and then in the front, there goes this additional lid and leads the air over the vehicle. And in the rear, there is this small wind deflector going up. So that way you can drive it with four people. You don't have to install the wind deflector, put it out again and so on. But from my experience, and we will test it, of course, here on the motorway again, this is helpful and especially helpful with four people, but it does not replace the real thing. No, nothing replaces the real thing. That's always the same. Uh, and I can show it to you and it's really interesting. And even more interesting is when I showed that last time in the BMW 4 Series, millions of people watched exactly showing me that feature on our shorts channel. That was very interesting. So I release it from the trunk and then you can see this here goes forward. Oh, by the way, Isofix. So for child seats in the lower part, then we put this down and that. And here, there we go. This is where they hide the wind effect. It looks small at first and they increased also crash safety. So there is a side or like head airbag for the rear seats right here. And therefore, because you have that airbag, the wind deflector has additional safety mechanisms and is therefore also, let's say, a little bit more complicated to install. It's being folded like this. So they yeah, thought of this interesting new mechanism. So. This is like the forward part. So <laughs> now it's uh, um, Thomas' working corner. So there are two secrets to this installation here. You pull out these and then you put the whole thing in there like this. Then it's here fixed. And then here you have to unlock this additional strap and you put it around the seat belt actually, which is a little bit tricky to do like this. But you get along like this and then this here sideways and mount it like uh, uh, like this because that way here is actually fixed with the seat belt so when the airbag deploys there's no danger that the wind deflector flies all over the place that's the reason behind it you know so and of course you can always put it back for better visibility to the rear this way of course no one can sit on the rear seats but you will definitely have more wind protection when with this one than with all of the other air cap systems and so on. This here is control central for the air cap system. This is then here to close the convertible roof. This is to open it. And then more good news for people who really love animals like me. Soon, just not at the start of ordering, but soon and you know, a couple of months later, they will also offer an animal free steering wheel that you can get a complete interior animal free because next to the seats, there's the steering wheel and also this um, here, this strap here from the seat. So even if you have an article seat, this would be the animal skin, but then everything of that is replaced. That is completely animal friendly and also more sustainable from the whole life cycle. Now Leo will help us showcase the rear seating experience. So first of all, because I want to show when she is now all the way forward, like she could still sit there 
what's left then behind. So this is behind my driver's seat, hardly anything. And here now a little bit more. So do I fit there now? So first of all, behind the driver's seat, here, you pull it up, slides forward automatically like this. Of course, when the roof is open, then it's way easier. So, and then I put backward and yeah, this would squish me. So yeah, this does not really work electron wise. Now we can go with the time codes. Thomas in the rear seats. Thank you so much for that with the time code indication. Now I move over. So this is the way I would be driving. Leah would still be able to co-drive. And then this works. So three tow adults does work. Anything else above that is, I would say, a compromise. It's really not too comfortable here in the rear, but it's of, of course also not the main purpose of this vehicle. What is left? Yes, how does it look like when the roof is closed on the interior? Now the roof is closed and with 189 or 6 for 2, there we go. I still have enough headroom left, so in the front it's no problem at all. By the way, these very good acoustic soft tops here, they are awesome in the performance. It's also quite silent when it's closed, even if you're driving. Yes, at high speeds, if you go like more than 130 kilometers an hour, like more than 80 miles an hour or something, then the coupe is still more silent. But for most normal speeds, the convertible will do very good also with the soft top and here in the rear. So there we go with 189, 6 for 2. It does come close. My hair is touching the ceiling already. And that's not ideal for tall people when the roof is closed here. It works somewhat for shorter trips, but not ideal. So what can we fit in the trunk? 385 liters. Flip the logo right here. There we go. And then this part here is opened and then the roof is underneath it. And as it is right here, here I have to put in the suitcase like this and then I can push it underneath it. So that works. Other than that, when the roof is, uh, roof is closed, then you would have this area here additionally. Right and left, you can also fold the seat, the seats, the rear seats, and you can load things through. That is also possible. And what's also interesting now, the feature is that when I close this one here and then I open the roof again, it automatically goes back into this positioning, and that's good. And underneath, you have also some space here, for example, and for this shopping basket like this. It's a, yeah, it's a nice addition. Oh, and Leah also discovered here the MicroStar pattern on the sewage system cover. Yeah, they also take Mercedes design now. <laughs> Under the hood, two liter, four cylinder petrol and diesel actually. And the three liter, six cylinder petrol engine, inline six cylinder, 381 horsepower, 4.4 seconds in the acceleration figure. Of course, my favorite engine then here for this very vehicle. There is no plug-in hybrid available for the convertible that would be available on the CLE Coupe. And here I don't only have the graphite grey Magno car, but I also met one of my friends here, Betim from Merck Benz King. So check out his channel. I'll also link it below. He also has uh, especially always Mercedes reviews then for you. Woo! That was 0 to 1 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour from standstill and slightly uphill. But that shows you that six cylinder also gets the Lia meter going really nice. And now some dynamic driving here in these corners. Well, the steering wheel is really well calibrated, gives me a good feeling here, especially in the sports mode. Yeah, and the suspension is still on a comfort setting, definitely. But with the sport mode, it does give me some more feedback. So, yeah, driving fun is definitely there. However, it is not as agile as I would compare it to the competitors, which are a little bit smaller now, like BMW 4 Series or the Audi A5. This one is definitely more a cruiser in the setting. Might be a little bit different than maybe in, in the AMG version that is coming up. Uh, yeah, but here it is fun, but definitely has more this cruiser approach. Sport mode. That was 40 to 115 kilometers an hour. And here driving at around 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Let's test the air cap system. At the moment, it's drawn out. There's still some wind turbulence going on here, so I can already tell you right now, there is no replacement for a real manual wind deflector behind us. You can still get one, but we want to test it if it works without, well, only when it's really hot. Other than that, you need it. So let's draw that one back here. 
yeah, I think like there's more wind turbines like around here, this area like between us now, when we pull it back out again now, this top part, plus the small behind. Yeah, it's reducing here a little bit, but then again, you hear more, you hear more wind from this top deflector, but so when you're driving with four people, then it's actually a decent system. Other than that, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of it. So I would use the manual wind deflector right there if you don't want wind turbines in there, and that's it, period. This system cannot, cannot match that at all. So yeah, now we can, we can use it, but I would actually not be pleased of hearing that one in the front all the time also while driving. Other than that, it's a nice cruiser here, especially with the six cylinder, even if you are not using all that power all the time and just like in a comfort mode maybe also then you can either a sport mode or a comfort mode, even just slide you on the throttle, pushes you forward with a slight delay until the turbo sets in. It's just a nice feeling to have these power reserves always, you know. The suspension is really good here, the adaptive suspension, you can get a fixed one, a fixed sports one, or here the adaptive suspension, and in the comfort mode, really evens out everything very nicely, I love that, and when we are in the sport mode, you feel it's getting a little bit stiffer, I get more feedback from the road, but at the same time, you also lose some comfort, but you have the choice then at least, that's actually a good thing. And also equipped with the modern assistance systems here, for example, Adaptive Cruise Control has also the active lane keeping assist. And look at that, now the motorway is making a slight bend to the right. And look at that, how smooth the steering is being directed. How yeah, That's working really very nicely. And here yeah, we can go back to the sport mode. Some more 90 to 120, let's go. Oh, that's it. Yeah, really nice, very smooth. Yeah, but once again, for lower noise volume, you would need the real wind deflector there behind us. And I really have to say, very important aspect, the seats here with the animal skin surface, you know, like the bones underneath my booty, they're already hurting. So you need to go for the microfiber seats if you choose here the coupe or the convertible of the C CLE. At least the article, the um, the high-grade leather red. This is also softer than the animal skin and the microfiber and even more. And of course, always pretty cool to close the roof while driving. And here at the moment, we're driving about 30, but that really works up to 60 kilometers an hour now. And it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing actually that it works up to that speed. But usually I would maybe go for these speeds here and then we immediately feel how silent it is getting in here. So these acoustic soft tops yeah, this was the um, traffic warning here, by the way. So, yeah, it's, it's no comparison, you know. It's really just that this my experience when you're driving like German Autobahn super, super fast. Then coupe and convertible are still a difference. But like that, second exit at it's the roundabout onto Obama. Uh, onto Obama. Obama is also here. Interesting. So let's deactivate that for a second. So, and let's open it again, let's see how that goes. And you hear also the difference once again. I really love doing the soft tops here because when you're getting in a sudden rain shower or something, it's so easy to close it again. When you remember these times when we had more like the hard top convertibles, that wasn't possible. And yeah, just pull it here, easily done. And we also mounted the real wind deflector now. So especially like the, the wind turbulences that are between us here. So between Leah and I, like this area here, it's still present with the air cap, although it is redirecting the air. The real wind deflector here is so much calmer. And to me, this is maybe the best combination. Just leave the air cap in because then you have less noise from the top here. At the same time, this classic stuff here reduces it here in the middle. So um, to me, the most comfortable setup as for the whole wind thing, definitely. So yeah, and now we are driving a little bit into the, not sunset, but sundawn. Beautiful island of Tenerife here. So if you have time to visit, you should definitely do it and um, go up the Tate mountain. So um, that is a very, very beautiful spot. Pricing, 66,000 euros would be a German entry price, 90,000 euros approximately if you go in for the CLE 450, the six cylinder, and with all the bells and whistles, you can easily crack 100,000 euros.
would I buy it for me personally? Because as I said initially, this is indeed a car I would buy just for fun. I love this very segment here. And I think it's also time to review my current personal vehicle. I think I'll make a special review on that one for you very soon. But here now to the CLE. Exterior rise, I really love it. I think it's a very beautiful vehicle, especially also here in the blue color. So that's actually no issue at all. Also the engine, I really like it very much. Three liter, six and up, still a true deal. Whereas even the C63 gets the four cylinder now. So I think that's also then a very good choice when you really want to enjoy this very vehicle. Consumption really depends. Interior rise, I think from the looks, it's also pretty cool. Big problem, of course, here with the animal skin seats. They are, I can't even believe how this got through testing. But the good thing is that the microfiber seats are available and I have been testing them earlier in the coupe and also in the convertible when we did our first very short preview and they are actually much, much better. But in general, the competitors, the BMW 4 Series and the Audi A5 do offer more seating cup and indeed. I like some technological solutions like the uh, you know, tilting screen, for example. That is actually a cool idea. And um, they do get a lot of tech here, in here, definitely. The air cap system is a nice idea for four persons, but the real normal wind deflector here just does a better job. So if I would buy this vehicle, I probably would not even use it, you know, the, the air cap. I would just use this one and that's it. Of course, then again, for four people, that's okay. Trunk space, of course, not, not like you know, super much, but actually sufficient. Overall, I think it's an interesting proposition here, but can it match the BMW 4 Series or the Audi A5? Well, the thing is, these are both more fun to drive, they are less expensive, and they offer more seating comfort, and then, my choice is already quite clear.